let's go. We live. Ow. What the heck? Yo, yo. All right, we're back again. <laughs> Ashy Knuckles in the house. It's your boy Mosey yeah. P and B Dubs. B what? So with it. B Dubs. Johnny Dubs. B, 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 Hold B. on, where's Johnny Dubs? I don't know. M I A. We back I again. He'd be here, man. Well, well, I figured he'd be here because you got some Sergey. He, he can go crazy about Sergey and have a good time. This is like perfect. Let me tell you, when I saw him, he was very hype about Sergey. He's been hype about Sergey for the past few days, weeks. You know him. He got he got his fighters. He got DDP and Sergey. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Sergey. Speaking of this guy, this how old is he? He's under thirty, right? I don't think so. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look him up. I'm gonna look him up. But he's under thirty, right? So if he's under thirty, that means he's like one of the few heavyweights that are under the age of thirty, on the good side of thirty. I, I, I'm taking over on 30. Um, just He's been in the game for a little while. But let's find out for sure. 92. 31. Here we go. Yeah, I would, I would take the, I was, wait, I wait, wait, wait. the over on it. He has not had his birthday yet. He is not 31 yet. He's 30. Okay. So, well, <sighs> well, his thing, he... He's not 30 yet, but we know that heavyweights tend to have a longer shelf life than um, their smaller counterparts. Like, look through history, um, and even if you look at the current scape, um, you know, Randy Couture, got, who had a resurgence uh, in his mid 40s, um, DC's. On the other side of 30, when he went on his run, Jones on the other side of 30, he's a current champ. Then it's just Andre Vlosky still in the co- with the company at 60. Yeah, hey, I think he's like 62 now, isn't he? Right. He's got a birthday it, coming up. <clears throat> if he waits, uh, for whatever reason, they tend to uh, last a little bit longer. I guess I guess it's because they don't have to rely so much on being athletic. Uh, I think it's the weight cut. I don't think their weight cut is as uh, detrimental as like everybody else. You know what I mean? There's no weight bullying to an extent compared to a guy that should fight at 170 that's fighting at 155. Right. Or a guy that's fighting at 185 and he should be a 205 or a heavyweight. Um, that's true. Right. That makes sense. <clears throat> and then outside, well, then with Sergey specifically, he's basically, <laughs> for uh, results wise, he's Russian Francis. Hold on. If John was here right now, J Dubs, Johnny Dubs, that's exactly what he told me the other day. He was like, oh, that's, uh, I don't know how to say it. The white Francis? I'm like, hey, you mean the Russian Francis? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> hey, you took the word. Hey, no wonder y'all, y- y'all linked somehow, some way. Y'all are linked. <laughs> Maybe he's the, uh, the polar opposite of, I mean, the, the same exact Neo in some, in some sense as well. We have, we definitely have some similar opinions. But here's the thing, like, one thing about Francis, though, that I would say separates him from Sergey is Francis murders people with his power. Like, they're not TKOs. I mean, as, as much as he, we saw that fight with him and Curtis, and he put some, he tooled Curtis, Curtis up pretty bad. Curtis was able to walk away on his own power. Overeem had to go out on a stretcher. He had to peel Stipe up from the canvas. Like when, when Francis Francis has true knockouts. Where Sergey is more um he definitely has that power. 
put people down, but he doesn't like necessarily. I don't know if it's technique or if it's just um. He he seems to be more of a. He seems to have a little bit better boxing than Francis, like as far as his crispness of his striking. He, he seems to be more um, like a little bit more accurate, but not as much power. But I think it's kind of a it's a thin line because he still is a big, big athletic dude and one shot. And yeah, you're definitely going to be you, you, he's he, he's finished a lot of fights, man. So he's not lacking for power. But Francis is just what he did the Overeem man was just like it. it I don't know. It's just hard to, for me to make them seem like they're the same guy. You know what's crazy, though, is I'm not going to lie. I mean, he lost. He got smoked by Overeem, right? Mm-hmm. MMA math, right? And then this guy goes True. on a one, two, three, four, five, six fight win streak of all first round finishes. Mm hmm. Jesus Christ, I I don't I didn't keep up with him until he probably fought Derek Lewis honestly. So I'm only three fights of actually knowing who this cat is, and I don't think it's enough to be honest with you. We all know where he's he's next in line. Basically, we know he's gonna fight John Jones for the heavyweight title if Stipe doesn't fight John Jones. We know he's the next number one contender, mm-hmm. and honestly, I, I don't. I don't see it. I really don't see it. Unless he catches John, Captain Obvious, but I don't see him actually being able to beat John. No, not five rounds. No. Uh, look, you can say what you want about power and being able to finish guys in the first round. That's cool. That's good. It's it's pretty. It sells tickets. What happens if that? Don't, what what's the? Does he? Do we even know what he looks like outside of that? Like if he doesn't, if he if the fight goes past one round, the only examples that I have is him getting dominated by Overeem on the ground, and Overeem's a kickboxer. He got dominated so, by Overeem on the ground to get finished. I think I think Overeem uh, finished that fight with ground and pound strikes, if I recall correctly. It was a long time ago. That's that's what I, that's what I remember. Well, damn. That's not a good uh, recipe to be fighting John Jones. No. Um, is he scary? Does he propose a threat? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I think he can, I mean, he. but here's the one thing about Sergey that I will give him props for. If you look at his resume, he fought a lot of uh, guys that are similar to him. Is like he's, he like ties, he beats, he, he, he knocked out Tuivasa. Knocked out um, Eric Lewis. He, and then he got finishes over guys who are also known for being power strikers. Um, he hasn't faced the technical guys so far yet. He faced a few grapplers. He got he faced the um, the was it Emil? Uh, the the really sh- the shorter, uh, more grapple heavy. I'll let you try to say anyway. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, I'm not even gonna give it a shot. Shop whole alphabet on the back. Off. He got the whole <laughs> alphabet on the back of his jersey. Yeah, he he got he took he took him out. And then like Blades is a grappler, but he chose to do he chose to go for one single leg after he was already pieced up. He he wanted to make it a kickboxing fight. And I think in Blades' head, the reason why he hasn't gotten a title shot is he doesn't have that spectacular finish against a top ranked opponent. So I guess he wanted to prove his stand up ability and that didn't work. It didn't look too bad though. It didn't look too bad. Like he was landing some shots. They had a good stand up fight from what I saw. It was it was it was decent. Blades looked like his he's improving, but the thing with Curtis Blades is every time he's knocking on the door for that title shot, he gets bounced out. The bouncer of the club says, nah, player, you ain't welcome here no more. Every time. Clubs at, <laughs> clubs at full capacity, bro. Yeah, every time. Well, here's, a, here's one thing, too. We said this a lot about um, Curtis, that it seems like he, he has all the tools, 
but not able to put it all together. Like not able to try, like to do it all at once. Like he can stand up just fine. His stand up's not bad, and his wrestling's amazing. But he can't do both like in transition. Like he can't go from striking to wrestling or wrestling to striking. He he seems to pick one side or the other. When he picks the wrestling. He has good results. That's true. When he picks the striking, he has mixed results. Because we did against JDS was good. That was he. I mean, obviously JDS was a little bit older. Uh, probably um, on his way out anyway, but he put the hands on JDS. Uh, knocked out by Derek Lewis when he looked. He looked solid in the Derek Lewis fight. It was kind of similar to this one uh, with Pavel, with, with uh, Sergey. Like, where he, he had some moments against Derek Lewis where he looked good until the uppercut. In this, in this case, leg kicks were working against Sergey. He was he was doing a good job with that. Fight didn't last that long. I mean, it was uh, first round, but he had some moments where he was able to touch Sergey. But the the difference was this: Sergey hit him. It was like significant. Whereas when he he was just peppering Sergey with shots, touching him. You know what I mean? Like point strikes. They were trading. They were trading jabs. I feel. But then the uh, Sergey's jabs, Pavlich's jabs was. Uh... They had more weight to it. I feel did more dam did more damage. Like it, to me, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of questions about Sergey. Like like how does he do past a round against an elite level fighter? Because when you talk about fighting for the title, especially fighting Jones specifically, you're gonna have to have more than just a, like power shots. You're gonna have to have more than just that first round wave of horsepower. I don't think that's enough. Uh, Jones is too tactical, and he'll be able to he'll figure out a way to draw that fight into deeper water. How does he handle being off of his back? How does he handle um, constant grappling exchanges? You know, how does he handle being at distance? Because Sergey has a lot of reach. I think he has eighty four inch reach. Like honestly, so he right can now, play the distance. He can play the distance game. Like right now, I'm looking at the top ten of the heavyweights, and I'm just so curious of where it was at when we first did the first pod to see like the same names because they all look the same just mm -hmm. about. There's maybe mm -hmm. uh, Sergey's new. Yeah, I mean Derek. We don't Lewis know how Aspinall, out, but that's about it. Well, Derek Lewis is all look at this thing. Like he's always been that one trick pony, but it's one fucking good trick. So every time he he's he he got what two title shots? Lewis, he got an interim and the uh, he got the one with DC and then wasn't the one with Gone like an interim or something like that? It was an interim against Gone. It was. Okay. It was. It was. So D Derek's pretty much has been in that spot most of his career where. Uh, he would win some fights where you didn't think he would, and then he would get there. But he had obvious like aping holes, especially in the grappling and in stamina department. And then now he's starting to show some weaknesses, um, even in stand up. Like the fight with Gon, Gon kind of like exposed him in some in a lot of ways. Tuivasa exposed him in some ways. Um, that was a good fight with Tuivasa though. Definitely was, and that's that's what makes me have a little bit of hope for Sergey to be able to make this a good one, make this a classic because he he ran through all those guys, and I know MMA math doesn't work, but um, he he looked exceptional against Lewis. I'm not gonna lie, I thought Curtis Blades was gonna get this one. I'm not gonna lie, I really did. I thought it was gonna be Curtis Blades, the next contender against John Jones, because. I just thought that was going to happen. We're going to have a a true American versus an American title fight after Stipe and John Jones. Well, I mean, Stipe is American too, but you know what I mean? He's on his way out. I feel John Jones' uh, plan is beat Stipe. This is John Jones' plan, right? So that's one title defense. Then he's going to fight three more to have the record and then retire. So he's going to have four more fights, I feel. 
And does he win all of them? I don't know. I think, honestly, Blades and Aspinall are the two dudes I think pose the biggest threats to John Jones. Only if Blades gets it together. At this point, I, I thought I thought that too about Blades. Like he had, he posed like one of the biggest threats because of the uh, he can nullify the nullify the grappling and make it a kickboxing fight. I don't even I don't know if that's going to be a, the best route for him. And with uh, Sergey, I think Sergey does have a good shot. I mean, he can put anybody away. Dude's got power, and he's fast to go with that um, eighty-four inch reach. So he's not. He can play a distance game. He he has. He's explosive and he has power. Um, my only questions would be stamina and grappling. Versus specifically John Jones. The only other heavyweight that I see um, giving it any real run is Tom Aspinall, and I don't know what he's going to look like coming off that knee injury. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't had a fight since, and. He's been kind of like almost lost in the shuffle. What was that? Oh, that was my. Okay. He hasn't fought in almost a year. So, yeah, that he tore mm-hmm. everything in his knee, right? Yeah, he had a pretty weird knee injury uh, <laughs> against Curtis Blades. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, so, then, so where do we go here? So, okay, let's say, for instance, right? Let's say he does bounce back. And he's able to come back and compete. You fight God. And Steve A. Calling it. And Steve A does. What? Yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I, I can see that. Steve A. I mean, gone and um, Espinal. I can see that. In France or and in the UK, what, for sure. Does Sergey sit out then and then wait to see the result of um, Steve A. and John? I think this is. Then try to just get the next. This is uh, Mystic Mosey on the mic. I think John Jones and Stipe, once they figure out who's actually going to fight on International Fight Week, that's the biggest UFC that we have, right? Unless they do something crazy and fight like in August. You know what I mean? Just, you know, International Fight Week's always the weekend of July 4th or right after. Somewhere around there, right? So either they do that, headline that with, uh, but... You also got to worry about Connor against Chandler. That's coming up. Uh-huh. And you know, Connor ain't going to be no co main event. That's nice. just how they do it. So, given, and if it was both on the same card, that'd probably be the biggest pay per view you could possibly get, you know? Uh-huh. But the UFC's not dumb. They're going to spread their money out. So, sure. and you know that. <clears throat> The Steve A. Jones fight is a pay-per-view automatically. Automatic. That ain't no fight night. So, right. And it's going to be some place that's going to have a, a, a large gate. It ain't going to be no small gate. It ain't going to be at the no apex. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be somewhere oh, where yeah. they can have like 70,000 plus or something like that. They're going to have a lot of people in the arena for that one. Uh, it might be in uh, Madison Square Garden where he's trying to go. Makes sense. So if it's not International Fight Week, then John Jones is pulling the strings on that one for uh, MSG, and I can see that happening too. Let Connor have International Fight Week, and then John Jones fights in uh, MSG because he wants to. He he finally gets to fight in New York. Has he fought in New York? Maybe. I'm just gonna go yeah. with maybe. DC. Yeah. One did. or two. One of them, right? I, I know he had a light heavyweight title defense in New York. I, I remember him um, coming out with the uh, Jay Z song, "The Empire State of Mind." Mm, okay, I just can't remember the the, the opponent. Had it been DC? Was that light heavyweight? Or was it Reyes? Could have been. Could have, um, I don't think it was Reyes, but it, I know it was. Marietta. I know it was a two hundred five fight. I know it was a 205 fight. Obviously, he only has one anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's got to be one of those. It's got to be I, one of the last I three, do rem- right? Hmm. Wait. 
either way, I think um, if he's going to fight anybody, it should be Pavlich. But just for the legacy, it's the money fight. You got to have him fight Stipe just because he's the quote unquote greatest of all time heavyweight because he defended it the most. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really feel like Kane might have been the greatest of all time heavyweight, but that's a different conversation. Didn't Kane lose the belt and get it back? He didn't get it back in an instant rematch, but he did get it back. So did Stipe. <laughs> So I must say, Steve did the exact same thing too. He uh, lost, lost DC, got it back from DC. It wasn't an immediate rematch though. DC went on to fight uh, Derek Lewis to get that one title mm-hmm. defense in to mess up the whole little uh, champ champ <laughs> stuff. Like, oh, my back hurts. I can't fight Stepe, but I'll fight uh, Derek Lewis real quick. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, you can't blame the guy for wanting to get a, a title shot payday. Hey, 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 hey. Stipe had that boy looking like King Hippo in the second fight. Yeah, Stipe put the work on him. That that was some. Uh, that was a real good adjustment. Like mm-hmm. mid-fight, too, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. still going to the body and, and put that work on uh, DC. That's, that's why I don't, don't want to count Stipe out and say that he, um, he's, he, does, he has no shot. He's been inactive, and I'm pretty sure he's relatively healthy. Rumor has it that he's trying to put on some some size, bulking up, and <clears throat> mm-hmm. and that that might be the hold up with what's taking so much time. I don't think it's fear. I don't think he's afraid to fight John. No, no, and no. why would he not take? He wants a, that. Fight. Why would he not? For sure, yeah, yeah, I think so. And then why would he not want a title shot? Like that's this is a I know he doesn't do it for the like only the money, but the title, it's a, it's an opportunity to win one fight and be the champion. So why not take it if you're going to compete at all in the sport? Unless he's considering hanging it up, which um, that could be the case too. So we'll see. But I I expect Thebe Jones first. Oh yeah, I think that fight's gonna happen. It's just. I don't know what we don't know. We're just normal people. We don't know. We don't got no inside source to what's actually going on. It's just like kind of weird. Like okay, Stipe hasn't fought since what? Since he lost to Francis, and that's been more than a year. Like literally, what was it, like February or January of last year? We're in. It. We're about to be in May. It's the end of April. So, uh, man, I don't see Stipe fighting anybody else but John Jones or for the title. So, that fight happens, probably Madison Square Garden. That's probably the thing they're trying to figure out, like, w- the date. That's probably what you're, they're trying to, like, negotiate with the whole arena or whatever to get the actual date. There's probably all kinds of stuff booked, you know? Mm-hmm. And then they're probably like going so, back and forth. If we can't fight there, then I want to fight here, then this and that. And so, it's probably all kinds of stuff we just don't know. So, you want to get the number on that? Two years. Hmm? March 2020. March 2021. Is the last time Steve A fought. That was Steve A and Ghanu, too. Jesus Christ. So, he's been out of the game for a grip. So you telling me Francis hasn't fought in two years? Yeah, no, no, no. Remember, he, fought, um, he fought Serial. He fought Serial last. And mm-hmm. then he went on his, uh, he went on the hiatus so he could get out the contract. Damn. Yep. He fought, he fought Cyril Gunn uh, with the two busted knees. Wrestle rape Cyril Gone for the uh, the UD and then said, fuck you, pay me. Okay, 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 all right. Let's get back on track. So, 
Sergey versus uh, John Jones, if it happens. Way of victory, knockout, only way, not decision. Am I right? It sounds right. Okay. Okay. I would say I would say Jones would be a pretty big favorite. Oh yeah, I think he's at least uh, his heavyweight. They might give him like plus yeah one seventy five. I would say uh, minus two seventy five. Oh yeah, I mean almost almost three yeah, to yeah, one. Yeah. I was gonna say minus two fifteen. I was gonna throw some random number out there. You know what I'm saying? For John Jones. Mm-hmm. But then alright, say if in some odd world that fight doesn't happen. Say John Jones does something stupid again. We get a mm-hmm. an interim match? I don't know. I don't know. Stipe versus Pavlovich. Hey, I would favor uh, Sergey. You think so? Not not a not a big favorite. I would say Sergey Sergey would be something like minus one fifty. I don't even know if that fight. I don't I don't know if Stipe would take that fight. Do you think he would? Why not? I mean, it's, uh, if it's an interim belt, I don't know if he would do it. If it's for the vacant title, I think he would do it. I think it would have to if if Jones got into any kind of trouble that would prevent him from fighting. I would assume you know, he'll be out of the game for if not for life. <laughs> life. Be, yeah, because like at, at this point, like I don't see him getting another chance. I mean, he's not getting younger. I mean, he's what like thirty two or something, right? Something like that. I think 33 or 34. He's not that old. Something like that. No. He's like in his prime. Like literally, he's in his prime. Let's see. Look at it real quick. Thirty-five years old. Okay. Okay. He's thirty-five. He's at the prime. So so let's say he gets some in some kind of trouble, right? And he's out for a year. So you're talking about like him being thirty six by the time he comes back. And that's assuming it's just a year. So what kind of trouble is he's gonna get stripped for? Like, I mean, he does at John does have a pass. We don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I mean it, we know we do know. One thing that has been consistent about John is he he gets a lot of defeats outside the ring. Inside the ring, pretty fucking flawless. No, I'm saying, like, we don't know what kind of trouble he might get into this time if he does. Hopefully he doesn't because this guy is, he's needed. He's very much needed. He's needed in this sport. Yeah, I would say MMA is much better when John is in the ring. But, he's be, when he's in a cage, it's a, good, it's a great sport. I'm glad he's one of the best to ever do it. Oh, so am I. I don't know if we pegged him back then for uh, being in the heavyweight when we first started the whole pod with all the heavyweight fights we was predicting. I know we pushed uh, Gon up there, and he actually reached where he was supposed to get to. He didn't Talk He didn't about, climb the um, mountain, though, and, and sit up top of it, but he got there. He's so young. I mean, he's so inexperienced in the in the MMA game. So, I don't think his his book is closed. And they're probably all gonna fight each other. Every single one of them that we said was gonna probably fight like twice or three times, maybe. Except for Francis. Francis is one of the names that's no longer on this list. He's gone. He's um, out of here. And well, hey, well, hold on, hold on. That is a. There's a small chance he could come back too. The door's open. I mean, right? he'd really. Do- I don't know. I don't know how open it is. It might be unlocked, but I don't know if it's open. I think the door's closed, but it's unlocked. Like he would have to do some serious ass kissing to get back in the door. I don't think it's. He's. I mean, realistically speaking, he. There's not a ton of guys that would. I mean, look at every fight. He every fight that's possible for him makes a lot of sense. Steep A three, um, Francis Sergey, monster versus monster. Francis John. That's the one that they that's been holding the 
hold division up for a year and a half when they were going through negotiations. It's the and money. Then, and then we still got guys like Aspinall, who's uh, if he comes back and looks good after that injury, he's young and promising. So that you can, you can make that fight if he just jumps back into the company and doesn't get a direct title shot. Let's say he jumps back into the company and they want him to, you know, prove his merit. There's, there's plenty of matchups that, he, that that Francis can have, and he can add to a fairly shallow heavyweight ranking. Because, like, realistically, the there's not a real top ten. I mean, there's a fringe top five. That top five Thibay is solid, is though. It's respectable. It's, it's respectable. Good, it's like, I like it's respectable. I like I like I like Blades. Even though he's probably out of the top five now, I know he was a four. Yeah, he's he, still at four. Um, fought Sergey. Still at four. He's still, he's still at four. Still at four. Have they updated it, or is it just uh, no Today, movement? Today's Tuesday. Yeah, they updated it. Remember, okay. I told you uh, Sergey moved up one, and Stipe went down one. Okay, so Sergey's Sergey's now two from three. Yeah, but that's why and I didn't understand. So is gone three. Gone's one? Numero uno, which makes zero sense to me. Yeah, the, the, none. Um, well, I mean, I guess his stock can't really fall. Um, I, he wasn't, a, he, I guess he was kind of expected to lose to John, right? I mean, the inexperience Ooh. of, the only questions you had in that fight was, how would John look at heavyweight? But matchup-wise, I would assume that John has to be the favorite, yeah. All right, let's play matchmaker. How does uh Gon fare against Blades? Depend. Uh, which blade shows up? Wrestling Blades. Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Because if wrestling blade, if wrestling blade shows up and he's not looking to strike at all, Gon can still use his footwork to to keep away from being um taken down immediately and he can kind of you know pepper blades up and win a decision um he's good at that he is very good at fighting on the outside he is very good at that mm -hmm. point fighting hard sparring he's very good at that in fact that's how he probably got most of his uh dubs in my opinion before he fought Frank. if god has learned anything if god has learned anything at all from his last two losses he got grappled. Um, he got uh, UD from grappling with Francis, and he got squeezed out in a um, few minutes. With Jones, and it was all grappling. So I mean, I would imagine if he has any kind of real camp, and that's what he's focused on, is his defensive wrestling and his overall grappling game in general. Because we know what he is as a kickboxer. He's excellent as a kickboxer. You know that cat? He likes to uh, like just chill play video games, play basketball. He just likes to chill. He don't take, like, training that serious. You know that? I heard leading up to the Jones fight, which is what made me think Jones is going to be a massive favorite, when he, he said something to the effect of he only gets ready for his opponent when it's booked. He's not, like, working on the skills outside of um, camp. And I'm like, buddy, that ain't the way. But that's that also shows his inexperience. He's... What? He has what seven fights? Something small. Let me look. Yeah, like yeah, that makes sense. He, if you think about it, like that, there's 13, a reason why boxers. Thirteen. Thirteen total. Thirteen total. How many for UFC? Let's see. For UFC, he got. Oh, he got. He got quite a bit. That, more than ten. UFC fights? You got 10. 10? 10 years. So think about, <clears throat> well, think, think about that. Like, that's still relatively young in, the, in this. Um, that's, that's, a, that's not a lot. And then if you look at um, the level of competition, he still has a lot to prove. I mean, we know he's excellent at kickboxing we know he's um a very good athletic big strong athletic heavyweight um and that's why i thought the title shot for him was kind of early like he, i mean yeah he he fought Derek lewis for the interim title 
Maybe. He got mm-hmm. he got Francis for the, the actual title. That's two title title experiences, and then John Jones will make three for the the, the title shot with Jones. But that's thirty percent of his fights in the UFC. He, three of his ten fights was against was title shots, and he's still sitting at number one. So I was imagine he's a a fighter or two away from getting another title shot. We pushed him hard, but I, I just I don't think he's the guy. Maybe, maybe he's not. I mean, I I don't want to write him off completely because I mean, you be he can change. He can get. He can dedicate to um, grappling, and then he's then it's a whole different animal. I got one. I got one. I like. Top performing uh, gun against Aspinall. I'm going with Aspinall. Ooh, I like Aspinall okay. over that well, one. Aspinall is m- much more well-rounded and equally, if not more athletic. That's what I'm picking. I, so, uh, is he the dark horse, or is he the, like you can't even say that, right? Because everybody's expecting him to bounce back tremendously from the knee injury, right? I'm just hoping he's the same. Like some people never recover from those knee injuries, but GSP who's he's recovered. young? So yeah, I mean he's he's young. He it, there's a chance he can come back and be phenomenal. Who else? And that's that's Who what I want. I want that. Head. And trying to think of me thinking MMA. I know there's GSP a lot of guys who just never were. I can't really think of who else. They messed up their knee that bad. Knee injuries. Back. Knee injuries definitely de- derail careers, though. Oh, yeah. I would say leg injuries because like, there's, there's a lot of examples of leg injuries. Oh, definitely. Not, not specifically knee. And right off the top of my head, I can't think of um, any that just pop out, but I'm sure with a little Google, we can find I mean, a bunch. You just, you just say Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva. <laughs> there you go. Two leg injuries that was like serious, and they ain't. Well, I don't even think Weidman's fought since, has he? Dominic Cruz had a bunch too. Oh man, Dominic Cruz had all the injuries: shoulder falling off, both his mm-hmm. legs and his knees going opposite directions, and taking a train ride somewhere else. You know what? I got a dark horse for heavyweight. I'm light heavyweight. Light from, that that can move up that can move up from light heavyweight at two that are potentials. Pereira could move up and uh, be a be a heavyweight for sure. Hold on, like, hold I don't on. see any reason why he couldn't. And then Yuri. Hold on, hold on. We've reached the uh, we've went over the time limit since we're doing a short one today. But mm-hmm. save that thought. In fact, let me let me put it in the notes. We'll go with that one for the next one. The possibility. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I'm thinking of the the bigger guys in like heavyweight who have a chance to move up. Who can move as up? it stands? Let's go with that for as our it next stands, episode. What we got who can move up the next episode. Who can move up? So, but as we as it stands though, Don Tuivasa. Uh, Sergey and Don are the, the clear cut like as who are right at the door for fighting for the title. Oh, oh and then the on. guys on the outside looking in. What what I say? Uh, John's got a he's gonna fight Stipe, right? That's one, and then he's got what mm-hmm. Sergey. That's champ versus Sergey. Where does Stipe rank? Three. He's got Sergey Blades and then uh, Aspinall. That'll be the four title defenses, and he's done. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, that's what it is. Wait, wait, hold it. That dude, all right? Stipe, Sergey, Blaze, Aspen. Yeah, that's the top five. But once he clears that out, he's done. John Jones is done. I'm telling you. And that's let's say, let's say he fights twice a year. He'll be what thirty seven at that mark. It's a good age to retire. Hmm, it'd be interesting. It'd be, it'd be a hell of an accomplishment. Definitely look good on his resume. He's got a uh, secret boss match, though. 
is he's going to eat a is lot that? of pasta and steak and put on some weight. Is that? Is he? Who? Stylebender. <laughs> he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to move up to heavyweight, too, and fight uh, John Jones. Well, hold on. Okay, okay. On that note, we're done for today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and listening in. Now, like and subscribe, my boys. Zip it up. Appreciate it. And zip it out. Zip it out. Peace.